have one more speaker yes, left? Yes, we do. Yes, yes. Mr. John Ratliff. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Roy, I just wanted to remark that the last two shows my group Dervish played at the hideout, we dogmatically went with the first suggestion we got. Those suggestions were respectively toilet and poo. <laughs> and those were good shows. Uh, so Cody asked me to name this talk before I had any idea what I was talking about, and I gave him the extremely silly name Who Arted, because it was the dumbest pun I could think of. And <laughs> Also because it actually reflects uh, the actual attitude you get from certain improvisers when you talk about art and they make a face like something smells bad and they will let you slide unless you keep doing it or you get too noisy about it and then they get irritated. Um, so I kind of want to address that, uh, uh, that kind of... Uh, knee-jerk reaction, not everyone has it, but that reaction was like, I'm not doing art, that's ridiculous, and kind of examine maybe where that comes from. And so uh, maybe attempt two things. One, to convince you that if you're an improviser, you are actually an artist. And two, that that might not be a bad thing. I will fail at both of these. That's fine. Um, so for the purposes, well, I mean, one thing I wanted to mention was, I, I think there are, a lot of, there are a lot of good reasons for this instinct. One is uh, comedians by definition, are aware that it is very easy to make fun of something that someone takes seriously. And so one of the ways we protect ourselves is we try not to show that we're taking anything seriously. So even though you have people who are devoting hundreds of hours, thousands of hours to working on something, they don't actually want to come out in public and say, this is really important to me. Because then someone could make fun of them for doing that. Guess what? They can make fun of you anyway. You know? uh, Broad City most recently made fun of you for doing improv. But... Um, uh, but uh, it is, I think it's a form of self-protection. It's like we don't want to be considered pretentious. And the other thing is there's a very practical consideration is like people can point to them. It's like when people get pretentious about art, they produce shitty work. And that is absolutely true. Absolutely true. The problem is doing the opposite also produces shitty work. I've seen plenty of pretentious art theater pieces that were terrible. I've also seen plenty of improv shows that were terrible because people didn't give a shit. And they were not committed to doing something really great, and they weren't prepared to commit to it. So I would say that one's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other. But those are, I think, like legitimate objections to saying, oh, I am an artist. So uh, for the purposes of this discussion, I don't want to get into a, a, an argument about what's art and what's not. But for the purposes of this discussion, I would like to say that art is a set of standards or parameters that you've decided on and a certain amount of truth or honesty. So that's pretty broad and encompassing, but we'll... We'll examine that further. So, we open on that door from the exterior right after a movie riot show. <laughs> and the crowd is coming out of the movie riot show and their faces are red and wet with tears of laughter. And they are saying, that is, those guys are amazing. That's the funniest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen anything like that before. That was fantastic. We pan 10 feet to the left to see Movie Riot standing around one of the picnic tables. Carlos is vaping. <laughs> and they all have kind of grave expressions on their face. And we move closer and we hear someone saying, God, man, we forgot to bring back the crippled dwarf from the first scene. And Kirk turns to Lance and says, dude, I'm really sorry I endowed you with like pissing fire in that last thing. I didn't realize it was green spooge. And I've heard, I've heard them have conversations like this. And part of me wants to say, you guys, nobody fucking cares if you tied up the plot. Like you just, everyone loved that show. That was a great show. But I also get it because Movie Riot has standards. They are trying to do the best possible show they can. And they are concerned with getting better. And they do that by looking at what they did and seeing how they can do better. It's not that it doesn't matter that the audience liked it, loved it. It's that they have a different standard. And so I would argue that in terms of craft, that makes Movie Riot artists. Uh, right after this show, you can watch Movie Riot beating me up in the parking lot for calling them artists. But uh, who's an artist now, motherfucker? Um, but I mean, that's part of it. That's part of the, the idea of art is if you're trying to get better at it. 
And I would argue that most of the people doing improv here are actually trying to get better at it. And you have a standard. You may think, oh, I'm just doing this to get the laughs, or I'm just doing, get, doing it to be funny. But if anyone has ever come up to you after a show and said, not just to be nice, but said, seriously, that was a great show, and your internal response was, ah, no, it really wasn't, I would argue you have some sort of artistic standard going on. You actually have an idea of what's good and what's not that is not completely dependent on the marketplace or whoever happened to be in the room at that time. So that's part of it. Now, I want to veer off here into a little side kind of eddy of the general, uh, uh, the general like, I don't do art, into a very specific form of I don't do art, which is, I do comedy, I don't do theater. <laughs> <clears throat> I am unaware of any way in which comedy can move from one, one person's brain to another without passing through an intervening medium. <laughs> All right? Uh, sometimes that medium is the spoken word, as in a humorous conversation or in stand-up. Sometimes it is moving images and sound, as in film or TV. Sometimes it is in the written word, as on the page. And sometimes it is in theater, as on the stage. Comedy is a genre. Theater is a circumstance whereby people come into a room and sit in seats that are all facing the same direction, <laughs> looking at a space that is usually better lit than the seats, possibly raised off the stage a little, which is occupied by people who have come up here intentionally to convey something to these people. That is theater. <laughs> Very much like the stage I'm standing on right now. And if you are up here doing comedy, you are also doing theater, all right? It's not, they're not mutually exclusive. And the, the, the problem with that, it wouldn't be a problem if you just like didn't, didn't want to acknowledge that, except that I think by doing that, by, when, when, people, when people insist on that, they are kind of missing out on a huge potential uh, form of inspiration and uh, information about how to do this. But basically, I mean, it's, it's not, it's kind of like saying, man, I don't cook, I do flavors. <laughs> and it's like, well, how do you get the flavors to people? It's like, well, you know, I put the spices on the chicken and then I heat it up. And so it's like, you know, you're cooking. It's like, no, man, I don't cook, it's flavors. And then the person brings back the chicken and they're like, this is half cooked. And there's lumps in the potatoes. And you're like, man, don't talk to me about the fucking food, man. Just taste the flavors. It's like how you are conveying your comedy matters. It matters. And if you're doing theater, and here's, here's, here's a problem we run into is that it's just a demographic problem. Most people who are doing comedy, and for scene comedy for that matter, we've seen tens of thousands of hours of film and TV. Everyone knows what that's supposed to look like. Most people don't go see plays. And you know you can't change that arbitrarily, but physically, this resembles a play much more than it does a movie or a TV show. And it's, um, well, I mean, if you want to see an example of this, Cold Town produces consistently really high quality video sketches. Right? You look at the production values on those sketches, they're excellent. Because they understand that the better the production value is, the funnier it is. If you will imagine being hired to direct a comedy movie, and you show up the first day of filming, and your director of photography comes up to you and says, okay, uh, we've got the uh, second unit, they're shooting the exteriors you know, for the setup shot. We've got a long establishing shot. We've got a, a, a medium two shot. And then we've got over the, sh over the shoulder reaction shots. And you go, no, 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 we don't need any of that. We just need the medium two shot. We're just gonna do the whole scene of that. And he goes, why? And you go, I don't do film, I do comedy. You know, <laughs> you wouldn't have a job at the end of the day. And yet, we come in here and act like by saying, I don't do comedy, that somehow the fact of the theater just disappears. Uh, I will give you an example. And I am the worst person in the world to make this argument. I have no fucking theater training whatsoever. <laughs> I don't even know how to do this. But we don't, we don't, we, we act like we're doing comedy in some kind of ethereal cloud instead of doing it in this space. And I think we're giving up, we're, we're squandering a lot of opportunity by doing that. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, and I, I just want to point out, I am not remotely, remotely arguing that improv should look like scripted plays. No offense, Roy. Um, <laughs> but, but to me, the kind of improv that is most meaningful to me, and I, Roy will agree, me, agree with me on this, is that is, is when improv is doing something you can't do in other mediums, when you can see that moment of the immediacy and the spontaneity and something is happening on stage and everyone in the room knows that it's happening. And sometimes that does not look like a scripted play. 
that's cool. I'm not saying that at all, that we should, we, we should be trying to make it look like theater. I'm saying by, by putting a blanket statement saying, I don't do theater, we're potentially really kind of screwing ourselves by not paying attention to things that might fall under the art of theater if we were to admit we were doing an art and admit that it actually involves theater. And people have been doing theater. People have been standing on stages in front of groups of people for thousands of years. They have figured some shit out. We do not have to reinvent the wheel every time. I just did a show called The Church of Indeterminate Divinity, and we decided we were going to decorate the set. And it's funny because we took a lot of time with it. I got a friend of mine. She printed these beautiful photographs on these giant banners, and we had Christmas lights. But she realized the banners would set off more if they were against a dark background. So she sewed a black curtain, and we hung it on this black wall. I'm on this back wall here, right? That, in theater terms, is the most basic thing you can do to a theater, right? People came to see the show. People from outside Cold Town came to see the show, and they remarked on all of this stuff. Improvisers consistently, people who played at Cold Town would say, great show, that was really cool. Man, that black curtain was really cool, man. It looked really good in there. And it's like, if you've ever seen three plays in your life, that would be the first thing that occur to you. But you're not going to get that idea from watching movies or TV. Because it's, it's a theater thing, you know, hanging the black, black curtain. Also, I will remark with some sadness that instead of there being a great flowering of shows at Colton in which suddenly it's like, how can we decorate the space to make it unique and distinctive for our show? What we got was a series of improvisers coming up to me going, hey, man, can I borrow those black curtains? <laughs> So, <clears throat> in a way, this kind of rejection of theater is actually really appropriate to improv, because American improv came from a bunch of snotty U University of Chicago people who did not like conventional theater and thought it was smug, thought it had nothing to do with their lives, did not think it spoke to them, and they were creating their own variation on that, right? So, possibly a good analogy is punk rock. Punk rock did not like the music of the day, that it, the, the mainstream music, said that's bullshit, it doesn't speak to us, we want to do this instead. But punk rock did not insist that it wasn't music. And in fact, there were a lot of punk rock groups when, it, when, when, punk, when punk first came out, there were a lot of punk groups that sort of insisted that technique was inherently corrupting. That if you knew how to play your instrument, you were a fucking sellout. <laughs> You're not listening to any of those groups anymore. And what you are listening to still, however many years later, 30, 35 years later, is the groups that wanted to play music, but they wanted to play it their way, but they weren't afraid to get better. And they weren't afraid to admit that they were part of a larger tradition. They just didn't want to do it the way it had been done. So there's that. And that brings us to the second part of this. How am I on time here? Yeah. So... So that's my argument for technique and for actually admitting that you're doing an art that might require some effort to get better at, it might require paying attention to things other than just the things that you automatically naturally do well, right? Um, but that punk rock idea, I think, is, is, has some currency, and that is that technique is a trap. And it is possible to do enough technique that you start to lose that authenticity, uh, like Roy was talking about, a group that is so good, they're no longer much fun to watch. They're putting in a technically competent performance, but there's no longer that, that spark there. Um, the irony about improv is that we start out really honest. When people first come in here, they can't hide. They don't know how. They don't have any technique. And unlike a lot of other art forms, like if you're learning music, you can learn scales for a long time before you ever have to reveal anything about yourself. In improv, you get up here, it is immediately your shit is visible on stage to everyone. But if you keep doing it for a while, you get better, and you get better at hiding. And there are a lot of improvisers who are very good at making every scene into the kind of scene they're very good at. It, it turns into this thing. They're not controlling anyone. They're not stage hogging. They're not steamrolling. They just, every scene winds up being the kind of scene they're good at playing at, right? And there's less idea of that immediate spontaneous moment, and there's less revelation. There's less of that honesty. So if you want the second part of the art, the first part of the art is committing to the technique and getting better at it. The second part is being willing to let go of that and actually be honest on stage. And here's the thing. I think there's a paradox here because 
if you ask yourself a question, why do you do improv? I mean, if you really answer it honestly, I think it's going to fall into a couple of categories. If you're doing it, you know, the, the superficial thing is like, when you ask people what they're doing, why they're playing music, it's like, it's to get laid and to make a lot of money. Those cannot possibly be your answers if you're doing improv. Or if they are, I've got some bad news for you. <laughs> But I think, you know, down, most comedians will admit, it's like on some level, it's like, I want to be seen. I want to be understood. I want to be admired. And really, if you get down to it, I want to be loved. I want people to love me. The irony is, we get up here, we learn how to do improv, and then we immediately start hiding. Because we're afraid if we show who we really are, we will not be loved. We will not be admired. We will not get laid. Um, <laughs> And, I mean, that's a, you know, that's a real fear that most people have. Most people have that fear. If I show who I really am, that's it. Game is over, right? But from a practical point of view, if you're trying to distinguish yourself from every other improviser in town, the one trump card you have is being yourself. No one can do that better than you. And it's the one card we refuse to play. It's the one card we spend all our time avoiding putting down. And if we played it, it's true. There's a risk there. It might be that everyone would go, ooh, gross, I don't like that person. But if, if that was your thing, you're golden. That's it. You're in. You have found your thing. No one can take that away from you, and no one can do it better than you. Um, all right. So that's my pitch for approaching this as an art. I want to make it very clear. Addressing, addressing now the people who are unconvinced and say, no, this is, this is practical work for me. I want to do good work. I do not care about the art bullshit. I do not care about the spiritual bullshit. I just want to make comedy. I want it to be funny. I want people to like it. I respect your viewpoint completely. I think it's a really sensible viewpoint. And I think, you know, seriously, it's honorable work. If you look at what people do to make money around the world, this is fucking saintly by comparison, right? We're improving the quality of life in the world, low use of resources, it's good, <laughs> right? So you are doing honorable work if you do that. I respect what you're doing. You cannot borrow the fucking curtains. Thank you very much. <laughs>that's it for this episode of got your backs comedy nerd out we want to say thank you for watching if you'd like to check out more episodes from us got your back podcast you can go to gybpodcast.com for episodes or you can search for got your back on whatever podcasting service you use itunes stitcher run all of them if you could drop us a rate and review we would also appreciate that as well